I made the most unbelievable steam machine ever. Seriously, you're not going to believe this. Heck, you won't believe this thing is even a steam machine. Check this out. See, see, I, to I told you you wouldn't believe it. This one is way better. I, I kind of like this one, though. Is that weird? Actually, you know what? D don't answer that. Hey there, how's it going? I'm Tech Dweeb. welcome. Thanks for clicking on the video today. So like, you saw the title of the video. I'm done, I'm, I'm tired of waiting. I want a real steam machine. Like what the heck, Valve? What the heck? Why is it taking so long? For those who don't know, Valve actually did make steam machines back in 2015. They partnered with a few companies, a couple actually shipped, and then Flop City. Nobody wanted them. Fast forward to now, the Steam Deck has been a runaway massive, unbelievably b b successful success. Not just because it's a handheld PC, but also because of what's inside it. SteamOS. It's so good. And now, everyone wants Steam machines. I'm not alone here. Look around. There's leaks, rumors, endless chatter on the topic. But do we actually have them? Well, no. No, we don't. We, we don't. See, SteamOS is kind of magical. It makes your PC feel like a console, and it totally works. It's probably Valve's most successful experiment, apart from Ricochet. PCs are obviously the best way to play games. I don't think that's a controversial thing to say, but PCs are messy. You gotta install stuff like Steam and update drivers and wrangling launchers and Windows updates that break stuff and then fighting Windows itself just to play a dang game. I think even seasoned PC nerds like me would probably rather skip all that junk if they could. That's where SteamOS shines. It tucks all that boring stuff away and it gives you a clean console-like interface for your PC games. And ever since the deck dropped, the world has been ready for a real Steam console. And I, for one, am freaking sick of waiting for Valve to get off their butts and make one. So I made my own. Now, I know that the idea of making a steam machine sounds scary. Like wires everywhere, screwdrivers, and that one guy on Reddit who insists you bought the wrong power supply. But here's the thing. It doesn't have to be hard. Because there is a magical little category of devices that you can just buy right off the shelf. But by which I mean Amazon. Plug it in and be good to go. Uh, you'll be doing computer stuff in like five minutes. I'm talking about mini PCs. I've reviewed a ton of these on my channel and I even made a full tutorial on how to turn one into a steam machine. I'll link to that video below. I'm going to show you a, a kind of quick version today, but this isn't a step-by-step -step guide, so go watch that video for the full guide. Today's different. I'm going to show you the most badass mini steam machine that I've ever made. This little monster is the new Geekom A9 Max, and it's packing some serious heat. It's powered by the Ryzen AI9 HX370 chip with integrated Radeon 890M graphics. And add in 32 gigabytes of DDDDR5 RAM, 2 terabytes of blazing NVMe storage, Wi-Fi 7, Bluetooth 5.4, dual 2.5 gigabit Ethernet. So bells and whistles out the wazoo. It's a bit overkill, really. But basically all the guts that you'd ever want in a modern game console. Except this one runs SteamOS, and it's as close to a steam machine as we're going to get until Valve re-enters the mini PC market. And who knows what that'll be. There's a few different options for installing SteamOS on a mini PC. The official version is the plain bare bones flavor, and that, that's probably fine for most people. Chimera OS has been around longer, and it does smooth out some Linux rough edges if you just want something that's plug and play. And then there's Bazite, the super Steam OS. It's built on Fedora. It's more up to date with drivers and hardware support, and it comes with Steams, Protons, Codecs, Flatpaks, and handy tools right out of the box. Basically, it's Steam OS, but with more advanced stuff under the hood, and it, it works great whether you're gaming or just using it like a full PC. They're all kind of equally easy to install. Bazite is what I use on my PC handhelds, and I, I like its desktop environment the best, so that's what we're using today. For storage, I'm starting fresh with a new 2TB NVMe SSD. I cracked open the Geekom A9 Max, I pulled out the stock drive, and I swapped it in. It was so easy. It took like 5 minutes. You can install Bazite over Windows on the stock drive or set up like a dual boot thing. The Bazite documentation explains how to do that, but I prefer the swapping the drive method. That way I can move this drive between PCs if I want to. And if I ever want Windows back, I can just drop in the original SSD and I'm good to go. And like I said, I made a full tutorial 
tutorial guide of how to install Bazite on a mini PC. So check out this video link below if you want a, a walkthrough. I'll give you the short version now. Uh, installing Bazite is actually super straightforward and simple. You just head over to the Bazite website and download the ISO image, and then you flash it onto a USB drive using a tool like Belena Etcher or Rufus. Then you plug that USB into your mini PC and you boot from it and follow the on-screen installer. The installer will go through partitioning, user setup, and then a few quick options. Once it's done, just reboot and then you're going to be in the Bazite environment with your SteamOS front end ready to go. Nice. Bazite isn't technically SteamOS, but it also technically isn't not SteamOS. It uses a lot of SteamOS. If you've touched a Steam Deck before, you're going to feel right at home here. Except this one isn't shaped like a weird plastic submarine. You can use this with a mouse and keyboard or a controller. You get big chunky console vibes, giant menus that you can easily browse with a controller, your library right in your face, and you get like the, the side panels with all those fun and useful gizmos. Performance overlays, frame cap stuff, video settings, and HDR. There's no TDP controls here because we're on a mini PC and that wouldn't make sense, but overall, the same device settings on here as you get on the deck. Oh, and if you have an SD card with games on it from your Steam Deck, you can literally plug that into this PC and run games right off your card that you've already downloaded. This mini PC even has an SD card reader, so you can just pop it in right there and expand your storage. And of course, in Bazite, you can go over to the desktop environment, and this is a full Linux desktop. You can browse the web, poke around in your files, install apps through Flatpak, watch cat videos, or even pretend to work. Install productivity apps and video editors. This is Linux stuff, and the Linux environment on Bazite is KDE. It's the same as on the Steam Deck, and, and that means it looks and feels like a, like a desktop PC. Even if you've never used Linux, you can probably find your way around here and learn as you go. And then, when you're done, you can hop right back into the gaming interface. That's the magic of SteamOS and Bazite. It's got this slick console front end for gaming and a whole dang PC hidden underneath. It's a double whammy. But we're not here for desktop stuff. We're here for games. So let's stop pretending that we're here for anything other than that and freaking play some games, shall we? Starting off as always with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. I test this game in basically every benchmark video, so it's a good way to see how different PCs stack up to each other. And everyone and their grandma has run this game, so you can compare the performance here to pretty much anything. At 1080p high preset, I averaged 44 FPS. You get more FPS by dropping some settings or using resolution scale, but even here, it's absolutely playable and it looks flippin' gorgeous. The lighting, the hair, peak Laura. Oh man, I'm, I'm looking forward to a new Tomb Raider game. You can turn on ray tracing if you want to, but I think that the baked in shadows actually look better in this game. And check out that frame time graph. Flat as a flapjack. That means consistent frame pacing. No stuttery spikes. Now obviously, don't go expecting top-end desktop GPU numbers here. Even an entry-level gaming laptop with a 3050 would probably be this. But that's not the point. This thing is tiny. Basically pocket-sized. The trade-off is simple. You're not maxing out new games at 4K ultra settings, but you are running a beautiful smooth Tomb Raider on a, a, a tiny little box on your desk. And that's pretty cool. Next up is Assassin's Creed Shadows. This one's funny because on Bazite, the game thinks that it's running on a Steam Deck. It defaults to the Steam Deck preset and it even locks out the graphics menu. Kind of weird, but it's honestly impressive that it runs on the Steam Deck at all. This is a brand new AAA beast and somehow it's Steam Deck verified. That is straight up sorcery. I know you can unlock settings with a launch command, but I didn't bother. It already looks fantastic on the deck profile and it runs so silky buttery smooth. I was running this at 1080p with FSR dynamic scaling and it looked like balanced FSR most of the time. I was able to turn ray tracing on and it barely affected the frame rate and it looks so good. This Radeon 980M does have dedicated ray tracing hardware and it's obviously enough to handle what this game wants from it. Frame gen was also on. And I know that divides people, but I'm pretty neutral to be honest. If I don't notice a downside, and if it feels fine and it makes things smoother, I'll take that trade. And I'm definitely fine with taking that trade here because it feels great. Super smooth, no weirdness, just buttery ninja action. Average was 56 FPS, which is wild for a game like this on a tiny mini PC. And here's a game that I haven't given nearly enough love to. 
Claire Obscure Expedition 33. Like Assassin's Creed Shadows, this game also thinks that it's running on a Steam Deck. So it strips down the graphical menu and, and caps the frame rate at 60. Honestly though, it, it runs great. I'm on quality FSR and in, the, in this underwater section, I'm getting a solid 60 FPS. Once the fighting starts, it, the FPS does dip a bit. It goes down to around 55 FPS, sometimes lower than that, but it still feels smooth and totally playable. Visually, it's stunning. This is a beautiful game. However, this game has some uh, some quirks, uh, like, like the edge detection looks a little funky to my eyes. Even on my big PC, it's like they're using some lightweight anti-aliasing trick or something. But like, whatever, the, the game still looks gorgeous and it plays great and it runs like a dream on this little steam machine. Cyberjunk 2077 has been the gold standard ever since it launched. The, the PC killer that demanded the beefiest rigs just to limp along. Back then you needed a monster machine, but now, five years later, here we are running it on a mini PC with a shockingly decent performance. I'm at 1080p, medium settings, balanced FSR, no frame gen, and averaging 57 FPS, sometimes well above 60. And oh man, this game looks good. Sure, newer titles have taken the crown for most demanding, but Cyberjunk still impresses when it hums along on modest hardware. It's also still an amazing game, with Phantom Liberty being one of the top sellers in the last Steam sale. People are clearly still playing, and honestly, there's never been a better time to dive in, considering it runs so well on modest hardware. One note, uh, this game actually runs a bit better in Windows than Linux. This is the SteamOS result, but if you're on a mini PC, you'll probably see smoother numbers in Windows if you run Windows. Kind of makes me want to do a full SteamOS versus Windows showdown video. Let me know in the comments if that's something you'd want to see. And speaking of games that set a new standard, here's Kingdom Come Deliverance 2. The first game was mind-blowingly good, not just for its realistic first-person medieval gameplay, but also for how amazing it looked, and also how demanding it was. And the sequel is sort of the same story. Honestly, this might be one of the best-looking new games out right now. It auto-selected the high preset, and I just left it there. I just added balanced FSR. I was getting an average of around 44 FPS, which might sound low considering it's a first-person game, but it's kind of a slower first-person RPG, so it does, it feels great. I actually prefer playing with a controller, so 40 to 50 FPS is fine for me. And yeah, it looks so good. The forests feel alive, and there's so much detail in the grass, and you can like feel the breeze in your face and the sunlight streaming through the trees. This game is still early in its optimization journey, so patches should only make it smoother over time, just like the original. But even now, it's impressive that this tiny steam machine can run such a demanding brand new RPG on high settings and still look this stunning. So I usually like to end these videos with a sort of mini review of the actual mini PC. And dang, I'm, I'm impressed. It's a slick little metal rectangle with rounded corners. It's sort of like a Mac Mini, but with way more holes. And I mean all the holes. Dual Ethernet holes, a whole bunch of USB-A holes in the front, more USB-A holes around the back, two HDMI holes, two USB-C holes rated at 40 gigabits per second, even a sneaky SD card hole. Holes for days. I like that the charging brick is tiny. I like that you can swap the SSD or the RAM very easily. And the fan is pretty darn and quiet as far as mini PCs go. You'll hear it when you're pushing it, but it's not like a whiny high-pitched fan. It's just fan. It's fine. I stuck with Linux for this video. Uh, it's a video about making a steam machine, so yeah, Bazite is what I'd suggest for that. But Windows would, would be fine too if you just wanted a computer. It comes with Windows 11 out of the box, and with two terabytes inside, you could pr probably just dual boot and get the best of both worlds. The price is $9.99. And that is a fair price considering the guts and the hardware that you get on this thing. You can get it from Geekom's website or from uh, Amazon. It's on there too. And I'll include some links below if you want to pick one up. And if this is too much juice, if this is too much mini PC or it's too expensive, don't worry. I got more mini PC videos coming. And you know I'm going to be making more Steam Machine experiments because I, I love tinkering with this. This is what I do for fun instead of going out on the weekends. So you can go have fun on my behalf while I endlessly swap SSDs and, and run benchmarks. And that's it. Let me know what you think of this. What do you think of steam machines? What do you think of pickles? Whatever, just leave a comment. I love reading whatever you choose to say down there. Except for that one guy who keeps showing up. He, uh, he scares me.